Okay, so we now have 15 minutes for questions. Um, I guess the, oh, it's happening on the screen anyway. Uh, so I guess speakers in the room, if you could just drag your chairs to the front. Um, the speakers on, I think we can still hear you if we can't see you. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll ask one question that applies to everyone, I'll go around, and then I'll ask questions for individuals. Uh, so the, uh, but the big question is, have you seen increased transparency brought about by your tools also increase in translate into increased accountability, civic engagement, and if you start with Lindsay and then to work forward? Yeah, okay. Um, yes, yes, in some ways and no in others. Um, something that I have seen is individual people who are mad about their members of Congress will sometimes like screenshot stuff and then like either go to their local paper or just be online about it which I think is a form of transparency and accountability, but no in like a bigger sense because um, there's not, a, this, sh this shouldn't be an operation that I do. This should be an operation that a, a bigger organization does. Um, and in my context, I think it increased a lot of accountability because uh, in the past there, there were some MP that went to the parliament only less than 10 years within the four years. So after we developed this kind of tracker, they kind of <laughs> try to present more at the parliament, which which is a, should be their, their responsibility. And also the political parties uh, seems to be more, more concerned when they promise something to the people because uh, they need to declare why they cannot complete all the campaigns they have uh, done during the election. And about the civic engagement, of course, because uh, in the past we have no idea that we can express our political expression based on the data. But right now, uh, because of uh, we passed the election and also we have the resource that they don't have to put a lot of effort to fight it. So they use our database to kind of uh, create a discussion on the social media, on the public forum, and even the public space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, we actually, some of the slides were dedicated to it. So most of the articles couldn't be done without Querido Diario because you have to have a, a, a team with someone dedicated to reading the official gazettes every day. And that's, and that can only be done in a huge press room or in the, the high population areas of the, of the country. And now Querido Diario is enabling the, the small cities to also have this kind of civic engagement to produce articles and produce research. So yes, we have been doing we have been doing the, a lot for the for the scenario in, with the Fantastic, thank you. Um, so if there we again, I'll, I'll just go with the original order. So uh, Lindsay, a question for you. Uh, what can you do, if anything, to use DC Inbox data to counter reps using email to put out the other the fiscal broadcasts? Okay, I like this question a lot. Um, I, I have tried a few different things. One is in every Congress, there's a committee of other Congress people who are tasked with making sure that there's some oversight that these aren't overtly political. And anytime I come, I read about three to five of them every day, so I can just like get a temperature for what's happening. And anytime I come across something that's like overtly political, I used to email the members on this committee to be like, hey, guess what? They have never once responded or cared. Um, and so like I tried the official channels, so I was like, that's a problem. Um, the other way that people kind of use these in a political way that, that's, that's more troublesome for me is there's supposed to be a firewall between your official communications and your campaign communications such that when someone opts in to receive an official.gov newsletter, they are not opting into your campaign uh, communications. And something that I like about the way that we set this up originally is it's just a dummy Gmail account that the email is not used for anything other than signing up for the official .gov. So there's no spam that ever goes to this email account. The only time things happen that look like spam is when someone ports their official email list into their campaign or reelection stuff. And I know instantly when that happens because I get a, a, a newsletter from them that's like, you know, so-and-so is running for governor or so-and-so is doing this. Every time that happens, I reach out to the campaign and I say, hello, it seems like you have something that's leaky in the way that you're doing this. Um, Jamie Raskin is a member uh, from Maryland who's doing this right now. Uh, and it, on average, happens more from Republicans than Democrats. And 
in my experience, when I go to Democratic campaigns and I say, hi, this is happening, um, I have had one of, the, one of the representatives from Nevada, whose name I'm forgetting right now, she stopped sending emails for about 10 days so that they could figure out how this email list got into that one. Everyone else has not cared at all. And so I, I usually, if I, if I see this, I put it up on Twitter and I just say like, so-and-so is using this. And on occasion, a reporter will contact me and be like, how do you know? And then I have to explain the whole background. They'll be like, oh, that's kind of complicated. Um, but I, I try. I'm not sure how else to do it. But if anyone else has ideas, I'm open to them. But I really do try as best as I can because I'm, I'm committed to this being a, as it should be versus a political thing that incumbents just get to use for free. So uh, you covered this a bit in your previous answer, but if you wanted to give it a bit more detail, like what has the reaction been from especially politicians and the government more broadly in reaction to this, you know, greater transparency, like through the election and then into the parliament, like is there any bit of it which they react better to than others? Yes, uh, I, I could say that uh, at the first place, uh, they are not happy with our website and I ever got sued by the parliament because they said that our uh, website uh, has an effect on national security, which doesn't make any sense because it's about the job of the representatives. But uh, we refer to the constitution that uh, this is this information is allowed to open to the public. So we fight in also in the legal term, and then we apply the act, and then we uh, right now I think not because of our fight, but uh, I think in. In overall, people need to know about this, and they also voice their opinion on their social media. So the parliament and the government needs to listen to the people, otherwise they, they're going to be in the election later. So right now they are more open, and the parliament has that uh, new committee that I mentioned is never exists before. It's an open parliament committee try to work with us because otherwise they need to fight with us, which is not friendly for them. So. Uh, it's not at the first place, but right now it's better. Very cool. And last question before we close up for the first day. Uh, up to you, which of the online speakers wants to take this? There's a few questions, same thing about like the maintenance of scrapers. Uh, a fun tech one sort of recognizing that you're talking about you know hundreds currently moving to thousands of cities. And I guess from your experience so far, how often do those scrapers break, need updating? Like how much of it is just going to how 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 easy is, is it to scale up what you're currently doing? Because I think it's part of what you're getting on to at the end of your presentation. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, usually the this, uh, we have uh, hundreds of scrapers, and usually they don't break much uh, because uh, companies that are hired to create the systems for the cities sometimes. And the systems are shared among some cities. We have different cities using the, the same uh, system. So uh, they, they don't change this the system a lot. So we don't have a lot of problems on changes. It, usually when we have elections, when we change the mayor of the city, and sometimes they decide, okay, it's time to change the system because of reasons. So these times we can have some uh, problems. But most of the time, we just need to monitor to see if they are publishing. Because we notice that uh, some cities, uh, instead of publishing the data every day or twice a week, as it should, sometimes it takes one, two months without publishing in the website, even if they publish in paper. So we need to track and monitor if this is happening. We have some monitors that alerts us when this is happening. And then we need to do some uh, manual validation. We contacted some cities to see, okay, uh, where is the document? It should be there and it's not there. But in a technical perspective, these creepers, they don't break a lot. It's not, uh, it's negligible. Uh, it's more a scale of creating these creepers because we have 5,000 cities. I am actually going to wrap us up slightly early rather than do another round because then we can go on to the drinks. Uh, but a round of applause for all our speakers. And 
and continue to ask them questions through the night, send me, send me emails, buy people's books. Um, I, I was really impressed by all of that. And thank you all so much for presenting today. And I hope you have a great uh, rest of the day. Thank you.